On today's show, inventory levels in the U.S. are starting to creep higher. Too many people are not paying attention while walking, and how autonomy will help vehicles have a smoother ride. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Last month, car sales were a bit of a mixed bag in the U.S., and Wards is forecasting more of the same for this month. The seasonally adjusted annual rate is expected to hit a strong 17.8 million units in October. However, automakers are estimated to sell 1.36 million vehicles, which is a 1% gain compared to last year, but an 8.5% drop compared to September. And because of that month-to-month dip in sales, inventory levels are starting to creep higher. At the end of September, there were 3.7 million vehicles on dealer lots, which translates to 65 days of supply. But in October, the day supply is expected to jump to 74 days, which is higher than the ideal 70 days for the month. There's no question that the U.S. car market is starting to soften, and that means going forward, the fight to sell cars is only going to intensify. One of the fastest ways to reduce carbon dioxide emissions is to reduce the amount of carbon in fuel. And that's why we blend gasoline with at least 10% ethanol in the U.S. But one of the reasons that number is not higher is because there's not really a sustainable option to produce enough ethanol for our needs. However, scientists at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory may have just solved that problem. The researchers created a new technique for converting carbon dioxide into ethanol. Because the process is relatively inexpensive and can be done at room temperature, the researchers believe it can be scaled up for industrial applications, but more tests are still needed. However, this is a promising new development we'll have to keep our eye on. You know the company that smoked a Tesla and a Ferrari in a van in a drag race? Well, it just got a new name. That's right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. According to the latest data from NHTSA, a pedestrian is injured every eight minutes in a motor vehicle crash. That's a 2% increase from the year before. The rise is linked to pedestrians which is defined in the Urban Dictionary as one who texts while walking, usually unaware of their surroundings. I'm sure you see these people all the time, and it's a global issue. Some have put up warning signs, others flashing lights on the ground. And one city in Idaho is giving out $50 fines to anyone who crosses the street while texting. It's also why safety technology, like Ford's pedestrian detection system, which can predict the movement of pedestrians to reduce or eliminate frontal collisions is so important. Speaking of Ford, those of you that love hot hatches will dig the automaker's SEMA lineup this year. It features five of them, a couple of Focus RSs and STs, and one Fiesta ST for good measure. We'll have more SEMA reveals coming up, but unfortunately, we have to wait until the embargo lifts on November 1st. Stay tuned. Do you remember EV startup Ativa? We showed you a video a little while back of their system in a Mercedes Vito van, or Metris here in the US, beating a Tesla and a Ferrari in a drag race. Well, that company now has a new name, and with it, we're getting a little more info about their sedan, which we should see a concept of by the end of the year. Lucid Motors sedan will come with an 87 kilowatt hour battery pack, 900 horsepower, and a zero to 60 time under three seconds. The car is scheduled to go on sale in 2018, and Lucid Motors eventually hopes to build 130,000 vehicles a year. Coming up next, a look at the shocking benefits of autonomous technology. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. 
There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. We've talked about the many safety benefits of autonomous technology, but it will even improve suspensions to help make our rides even smoother. On last week's AutoLine After Hours, we were joined by Tim Jackson, the chief technology officer at the supplier company Tenneco, which also owns shock absorber company Monroe. And he told us how autonomous technology will benefit suspensions. In the future, we'll actually be able to look forward, see an, an obstacle coming or a pothole coming, and we'll be able to react before we hit it. And, and you say, well, how precise is that? Well, at 60 miles an hour, we can see an object plus or minus two millimeters mm. in front of us. And so the, the electronics, the algorithms to do that, and, and frankly, autonomous vehicles are gonna create an infrastructure where we can take a vehicle suspension and make it far better and a far better value proposition than it is today. Not that it isn't great today, as evidenced but, by but that what you're talking about is You can't do what you're talking about with today's suspension. That's right, you can't. And, and that's why the future is exciting. And, and you know, we, um, I'm kind of proud of the fact we saw that coming and we created this thing called the Monroe Scalable Architecture. And if I, if I had the, the three units in my hand, you would look at them and you'd say, okay, they're all the same size, they all have the same attach points, they all have the same physical envelope when you when you're, uh, have a suspension, but it, it, it's better, best, ultimate. This one is fully active, you know, this one is semi-active and this one is adaptive. And so you can choose and once you've, uh, you know, built that architecture into your vehicle, it's very easy to decide what level of suspension you want without having to re-engineer the vehicle. So it could be a trim level for a car. It can be a trim level, it can be an option package, it mm -hmm. can be standard equipment at one level and an option package at a at a higher level. Mm -hmm. And so we, we really think that this scalable architecture of Monroe Intelligent Suspension is, is gonna help define the future of, of where vehicles go with suspension systems. You can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please join us again right here tomorrow.